Hello and welcome back to another Joe review. Today it is the Python Patrol Bat, the ridiculously hard to get Python Patrol Bat. So I did manage to get mine from um, Heroes in the Isle of Wight. Uh, they don't ship internationally, so I had to get him sent to a warehouse along with Outback and the Python Patrol Viper and then sent over to Australia. Uh, he was pretty expensive in the long run, 23 pounds, which is about $50 for the figure, which is good. But then the shipping fees on top of that heightened it up a fair amount um but i don't know how else i would get him these figures are never going to appear in targets in australia if they do appear in any of the few toy stores which we have over here which they won't then they're probably going to be ridiculously priced so very pleased that i could get him uh, distribution as you know is just really all over the place i've spoken to a few collectors across the pond in the states and they can't get this figure they can't get any of the um the python patrol figures they can't get out back they can't get some of the um, figures which have been out for a while like the original bat for example uh, i still can't get bat i've got him on pre-order with big bad toy store so hopefully i'll get him soon and i might do a comparison um this guy a target exclusive target really really killing us with those exclusives um but anyway looking at the uh, the package we've seen this a lot of times before now um unfortunately this is probably one of the last figures we'll see with this window because hasbro are obviously going to to the plasticless boxes uh, so i will miss that but i do think it's the right move for the company uh, or rather for the environment um, so looking at the box really nice artwork here and nice artwork um, on the side i'm assuming that this is identical to the original bat but i don't have that figure it's probably just been um colored differently python patrol on the left and then on the side he's number 41 gosh 41 already and then um his particulars again has bro removing that plastic there bat on the back, Python Patrol and that jungle design which we saw with Outback. So let's open him up and take a look. Okay, so here he is out of the box with all his accessories. The Python Patrol bat comes with one backpack and you can store his additional arms in here and one in there. And here are his additional arms. So he comes with a laser cutter. I think that's what that is. A blowtorch and a claw. He also comes with a sidearm and a Python Patrol chest plate. And in keeping with all the Joes, you can get everything onto the figure. Okay, so here he is loaded out and he looks pretty good with all his gear. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the Python Patrol bat. Now I don't have the um, the other classified bat, so this is my first hands-on experience with a bat. And I must say that I'm impressed. I particularly like uh, the head. The helmet is very, very nice. It's very sim simplistic, uh, just three colors, the, the black, the red and then some yellow accents but it works i particularly like that they used a matte black for it rather than a gloss but i really like the sculpting of the neck these gears and cogs in the creases there that's really well done uh, the chest plate so as i said before it does have this python patrol plate that you just snap on but i do like underneath all the exposed wires and gears very nicely done the um the top itself, or the shirt rather, is also well done. You can see all the sculpted creases here, and he's got his Cobra emblem on the shoulder. He's even got what looks like um, rolled up shirts and a button there. Yeah, I, I doubt that the bat is doing that. Like, you know, is he getting up in the morning and just thinking, oh, I'll just roll my shirt up today? You know, what the... Um, so these grenades as well are, are nicely done, just too sculpted on. And then working down, he does have um, a holster for his weapon attached to the thigh, and it is all the way around on the belt. I don't really like, um, I don't really like that it rides up like that. It might just be my figure, but it tends to just ride up over the waist there and then get stuck. Yeah. 
Uh, so I do like the the yellow here that they've used um, on the the chest and the shoulder. Uh, you know, and it matches obviously accents on the, um, the face plate and then the cobra emblem. Um, but I don't really like it on the boots. I think in the on the boots it looks a little bit too much. Um, I think they should have done something a little bit different. I'm aware that the OG bat is yellow and black, so when I get that in hand, you know, maybe I feel different. Um, but for me, uh, what I do like are these arms. The arms are great, uh, really nicely done, all sculpted here. Um, it is a shame that they didn't put any silver in here. I feel like they, they could have done maybe a, some dry brush gunmetal silver um, or a silver wash, but it's still very, very nice. And obviously you can just pop out the wrists and then pop something else in. So I think this is a laser cutter, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. Uh, and then moving down the trousers, um, uh, again, I don't know if uh, these have been used before, um, possibly have, but um, yeah, I don't really compare the, the figures. I don't really look at what's a reuse and what isn't, but uh, yeah, very nicely done. Um, again, pinless joints, you can see it on the back there. You can't really tell up here um, because obviously they've got um, robotic arms, so you don't really need to have it. But down here, you can see it is completely pinless and I'm really liking that in the newer figures. And it is noticeable, particularly on the shelf when you have um, some of the newer figures next to the old ones, you can see the difference. So overall, I'm really pleased with the aesthetic. Color scheme works well. Um, I think I'll get used to the boots, um, but overall, <laughs> very nice. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the articulation. So um, as I said the, before, these figures are the newer figures. So out back, um, the Python Patrol Trooper Officer and the Python Patrol Bat uh, are all pinless figures. And I'm really, really, um, prefer that look but uh, in terms of articulation is it any different so far I haven't noticed anything so at the head he does get um, a fair bit of down and quite some generous up and then full rotation butterfly joint at the shoulder we've seen this so many times before now he also gets sort of a bicep swivel I say sort of because it's cut a little bit higher um, or maybe it just looks like it is because the elbow is so much higher and then he does have just a single jointed elbow, but I don't really mind that because he does have robotic arms, but well, he is an Android, so you know I don't really mind that at all. Um, and then at the, uh, the interchangeable peg, you get full rotation. Heaps of ab crunch. Um, he has the bend a little bit higher, so he does get all the way down and all the way back. He gets full rotation of the waist as well. And then at the hip, all the way up uh, and then he has the drop down legs as well and then he has rotation at the thigh double jointed knee and then the rocker and pivot this is the only thing that I don't like um, I do see this on most of these figures I recently started collecting some Motu stuff um, some of the newer stuff from the Masterverse and I've noticed that they have the same design for theirs so I guess it's just standard um, but uh, it's not too bad um, in this case some of them it's it's just off and they're difficult to uh, to stand um, I think I mentioned in my previous video, if anyone knows where I can get some stands for my classifieds, please let me know because uh, I really need some and I can't really source any. Um, and also he does have a rotation at the, at the boot as well. So overall the articulation is very good. And just quickly let's just have a, a look at these uh, interchangeable arms. So as you can see. There he is with the flamethrower and then the laser cutter as well. I think it's a laser cutter, I don't know. Um, I kind of want to bend it there uh, like further up. But he looks pretty cool like that. Oh, I really do like this figure. Yeah, very good indeed.
So my final thoughts on the Python Patrol bat. You know, I wasn't too sure what to expect when I got this figure. I never had a vintage bat growing up, and although I do have a 25th anniversary edition, I'm a mint on card collector. And like I said before, I don't have the other classified bat. So this really is my first hands-on experience with any bat figure and I'm very impressed. It just works. Although I wasn't sure about the color scheme, it's already growing on me and he really pops on the shelf. The swappable hands are a lot of fun, so is the chest plate, but he just looks cool. Something about him is just very, very cool. I also like that they kept up with those pinless joints. I'm really liking that. When you compare them to the older figures, the pinless joints are definitely the way to go. But the real problem is, can you get him? because this guy, like many of the other current figures, they're just so hard to get, and I really don't get it. I won't bang on about it too much because I feel like I'm constantly talking about distribution, but this is no different. If you can get him, absolutely get him, because he's a great figure. And if and when I get the other bat, I'll do a comparison video. Thanks for watching, let me know what you think in the comments, and stay tuned for the next one.